What's up guys, Double Dog Gamer here and Star Citizen Citizen Con 2023 has finally ended and we get an exciting look at the future of Star Citizen and it is mind-blowingly amazing. And today we're going to talk about some of the cool things that I saw from it and things you should get very excited about. First, we got a ton of footage of Squadron 42. If you don't know what Squadron 42 is, it is the single player campaign for Star Citizen, a completely separate thing from the game Star Citizen, and it has been in development for a very long time, and it looks absolutely beautiful, and it is now feature complete, which means it is done. All they have to do is do the polishing, and we could probably expect it sometime soon in 2024, but they've done a huge graphical upgrade to it. The gameplay looks absolutely amazing. The world building is looks crazy. The story looks amazing. Everything about it looks so much better than the teasers we've been getting over the years. And with Squadron 42 being done and released, it'll open up a lot of developers to move over into Star Citizen to start helping make that even more feature complete. Next, we got a look at the Holy Grail server meshing. This is the impossible tech that was only really a theory, which is absolutely going to change the future of Star Citizen and allow them to build the world that they've been wanting to build from the get-go. We got to see a test demo of a single environment which was shown split into three different servers with no transitions walking between the servers, completely in sync when moving between them, items being thrown around, players shooting, vehicles driving around. This one little room was three different servers and you could walk between them, no problem, take objects, move them between them. This is absolutely insane because not only can they build the world even crazy bigger than it already is, they can dump thousands and thousands of players into it because it's running off of so many different servers. They, It's not just running on one box for this area, one box. The whole thing is running on thousands and thousands of boxes ready to take all the players in. This tech is what everyone's been waiting for. And honestly, it's going to change gaming forever because this kind of tech other companies have been dreaming about and they finally managed to pull it off something that was only theorized and they're going to start putting it into star citizen this should get everyone excited because it's going to change gaming forever we also got to see the first look at the pyro system this is the new star system that is coming in. We've been stuck in one star system for a long time now. We're finally getting our second star system, which is Pyro. And we got to see this new space station, which is kind of a derelict space station, but it's absolutely massive. We got to see down on the planets, the the outposts. They look like, you know, backwaters outpost. The world around it looks amazing. And this is actually coming to the test environment the end of this month. So this is right around the corner. And I'm really hoping to get access to it. We've been waiting for a new system in this game for a very long time. And the stuff they showed off with it, it, it almost looks like a Western, you know, what at the at the backwaters area. And a lot of the, the outpost and the station itself looked absolutely amazing. And I'm very excited to get my hands on this new system to make the game even bigger have a whole new system to explore which is going to be amazing we also got to see the new production facilities these are actually manufacturing facilities that are going to be on different planets now this itself is a raid so these are fully npc secured facilities that have tons and tons of items that you and your crew are actually going to be able to go land at take down security and steal objects out of there. Items, high value items, put them on carts, drive them to your ship, load them and unload them. This is a giant PVP VE raid system that's going to be all over the planet. You can, you know, either assist people in stealing the items, you can fly down and, you know, kill them and then steal the items or you can actually help the security to kill the invaders. This is a huge new system that's going to add so much gameplay. Uh, to the game if you want you and your crew to go in and do some big heist you can do it or if you want to be a security and help out the security to defend the facility for some kind of reward or rep you can do that there is so much that's going to be added to this uh, gameplay loop that it's going to be actually amazing to see how they pull it off and how it actually plays and this looks like it's coming pretty soon because it almost looked feature complete and it's going to be an exciting draw uh, for a lot of players who are tired of just doing the normal gameplay loops they've been doing for a while we finally get to see the new star map. The star map was one of the worst things in this game. Trying to plot your coordinates and see where you need to go was absolutely a pain sometimes. We got to see the new star map, which looks absolutely amazing. Not only that, we're doing a new HUD where you can even get a map overlay where you're in the cities. You can zoom in to see where you are in the cities on the star map now to find the interiors of buildings, what certain areas are to help you navigate. 
Now you actually have a lot more control looking over the star system where you want to land. You can actually add custom waypoints now and coordinates. So say you find something cool, you can drop a coordinate button, a beacon there, you know, because it's the planets are massive with stuff all over them and it can save. Then you can even either share or sell that coordinate to somebody else too. It adds a ton of new gameplay. Exploration is actually going to be worth something now because now you can actually save the spot that you were at instead of like, okay, if I turn 35 degrees this way and then point straight down and fly towards that rock layer, it'll be 10 miles north of me. And that's kind of how it was before. Now with this star map, it opens up a ton more possibilities for exploration. It is one of the most needed things in this game because the star map originally was terrible. Very excited for this um, because I was always the person that had a hard time finding Jump Town because you couldn't find it on the map. You had to just point at the planet a certain way and fly down. Not anymore. Now you can drop coordinates. I'm very, very excited. On top of the new graphical enhancements that we're getting, we're also getting new cloud and fog enhancements along with new anti-aliasing that's going to make the game look so much better. Water also realistically deflects now and looks way more realistic, so when you're flying really low, it'll kick up. If you're hovering, it'll kick up below you. Uh, it's not just there like it was before. It has a realistic... Um, you know, dynamic to it. We also get dynamic destruction. Say, you, you know, they showed a clip of a uh, ship crashing into a building and it's splitting to pieces and falling into the water. This is something that's absolutely amazing and I didn't think was coming to the game and I'm pretty damn excited for it. They also showed that infantry weapons can damage walls and barriers. Grenades can blow up the barriers too. We also get a new cloth and hair simulation, which actually moves in the wind, moves correctly how you run. Um, this is actually kind of awesome. It's probably one of the most realistic hair simulations I've seen. And on top of that, they also showed off new f the new fire and the firefighting system for in ships. So if your ship's highly damaged and catches on fire, you can actually go get out and work the fire and put it out uh, to help save the ship. This is something exciting. We needed more gameplay loops inside the ship, and we're getting really close to it. We're also now getting new animals and space whales come to the universe. This is exciting. We're gonna, I didn't think we were going to get some alien life in the game for a very long time, but they finally showed some screens on it, and I'm pretty excited to go fly around and hunt some space whales in my ship, get down on the ground to hunt some space cows also. I'm wondering you know, if it's just those two, or maybe there's a few more that they put around, um, or even you know, how are you going to find them um, with the ex exploration maybe. You know, you can go around and actually look for some of these animals, maybe collect some trophies and skulls, become like a big game hunter in, this, in the space universe. So that's pretty cool. I didn't expect to see that uh, in Citizen Con, but, you know, it's kind of nice to see the little things every once in a while. And the big thing that they showed off was base building. That has been talked about for quite a while now. There's actually one ship that they sold that is a mobile base construction ship. And now we got to see the base building shown off. They showed off housing, mining facility you can build, uh, medical, and a farming facility that you can put down on the planets. Now, the way this kind of works is um, there's three different security types. So if you build on a planet with a high security, it's going to cost you a lot to put the plot down. It's also going to, you have to pay um, pretty high taxes, but no one will be able to attack your, your your base. It'll be under constant security and it'll be safe. Then you have the low security system, which is going to be moderate risk. Um, if your base gets attacked, local security forces will arrive, but there's a chance they could get killed and your base is still taken over or you know taken uh, permanently. Um, there are taxes and upkeep, but it's a little lower than the high security. Then you have the null sec, which is extremely risky. Anyone can attack you, um, you, but you get to keep all the profits. There's no taxes. You don't have to buy the land plot. You can just claim it. And um, But you can build like defensive systems, weapons, and stuff like that to help defend your base. Um, they also showed off, well, they didn't show off. They talked about crafting. It'll allow you to craft weapons, gear, and even spaceships. And the way you kind of build is you... You design, you claim your plot, design how you want your base to look out, and then you keep bringing in supplies to feed the drones that are building your base. Um, so it's going to require a constant amount of upkeep, a uh, really hard, strong effort to build the bases, and then a lot of work to keep the bases. So this is going to be something you want to do with your organization. They also showed off a little bit of the new engineering rework. Before the engineering station was kind of boring on ships, you could reroute power and such, but now you can actually reroute the power in a more detailed way, but you also have the ability to assign. You can see the, if systems are becoming critical, you can assign work orders or priority orders to get those parts repaired. They also showed where you can go around and actually repair the parts yourself. 
um, to you know with your multi tool if if they're being damaged. So now we're getting kind of a more game a better gameplay loop of engineering. I don't expect this really soon, but it's nice to see you know with the fire and the repairing and the engineering station get loved. There's going to be a lot more things for your friends to do that are on your ships instead of just manning turrets. They also showed off a ton of new improvements to the FPS system. We're getting picture in picture scopes. Uh, you're also going to be able to take enemies prisoner and bind them, which is something really cool. A lot better movement to the prone. You're able to roll around. Your position changes. The third, you know, the models of when you're shooting are so much better. Um, there's just a lot of really cool stuff when it comes to, especially the new system of your backpack. Uh, you don't have to go into your backpack anymore to grab mags out. It'll pull it out automatically for you. It's just a longer reload. There's a lot of really quality of life improvements to the FPS system. Um, and I think that ties into the Squadron 42 gameplay with the FPS that they've done there getting rolled into Star Citizen, which is I really like because the FPS has kind of been neglected a little bit, but this absolutely looks amazing. There's going to be a lot of finishing execution moves too if you want to do melee. There's a lot of really cool things in there that hopefully, you know, Squadron 42 development helped create some stuff to make the FPS a lot better in Star Citizen because, frankly, if I'm assaulting a base, I want it to be a lot better than the current FPS um, that we get now, which is good, but it could be way better. Something I've absolutely been waiting for is the new persistent hangars with the cargo elevator. So now when you land at a hangar, it's your hangar. So you can drop items in there, gather supplies and lockers, and have all your items stored in this hangar. So every time you land, all of your stuff will be there. So you can gear up real quickly, get in your ship, and fly away instead of having to run to somewhere else, get the gear you left there. It's all going to be in your hangar. Everything that you need is going to be in your hangar. They also have the cargo elevators where if you're loading cargo, it'll come up in the elevator and you can load it on your ship manually, which is something I've really wanted for a long time. I want to be working on the forklift, loading a loading a you know a spaceship full of cargo. That's absolutely awesome. But you can also bring up your you know your wheeled vehicles instead of flying to another outpost and getting your tank. It can be brought up on the elevator in your persistent hangar and loaded right onto the ship. So it's going to make gearing up to do stuff so much faster. A lot no more running around the city to city. You can just go to your hangar. All your stuff's there. All your supplies, everything you need and you'll just be ready to rock and roll real fast. They also talked about some new ships that were coming. Nothing really crazy um, that I was expecting. You know, I'm waiting for my, my Polaris, to be honest. That's the last ship I have on the list that hasn't been released. But they did talk about that a lot of their ship designers were hired by another company. Um, and they've been kind of without developers for ships for a little bit of time, but they did do a massive hiring spree. And those people that they did hire are done with their training. They're already working on new ships. So it's going to be a little bit delayed. But this is where, you know, Squadron 42 coming out is going to be a big part. Because now you have a lot of those people who are going to be done with that after they finish the polishing. And that's released. Be able to move over to Star Citizen to help finish a lot of the stuff. Because they're going to have extra manpower on Star, to si Star Citizen at this point. Um, which I'm very excited about. So it's kind of nice to see all this new stuff. You know, it stinks that we didn't get any new real cool ships, but I know they're coming in the future. Overall, I gotta say this Citizen Con was one of the best. Everything they showed just gave me goosebumps. It made me really excited. Um, you know, Star Citizen is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Um, you know, it's... Everything they showed gave me so much hope for the future because we got to see things that I didn't think I was going to see for a few more years. And it just shows that with Squadron 42... You know, the development on that slowing because it's done. We're going to start getting a lot more stuff real soon. And, you know, with the graphical upgrades, the anti-aliasing, the, the server meshing, everything about this CitizenCon was amazing. I can't wait to see what the next few years a Star Citizen looks like because the game's going to change absolutely immensely. Now, I'm not saying go out and buy it right now. Um, you know, don't go buy Star Citizen right now. But you're probably going to want to get it in a year or two because it's going to be a crazy ass game and the game that we've all wanted. I'm really excited for it. Um, this was probably one of the best Citizen Cons, and I can't wait to see what next year's Citizen Con looks like now. Because if this was, you know, just the start of it, I can only imagine what we're going to get once Squadron 42 is done and people are really able to nail down some development of it. But let me know what you guys think. Are you excited for Star Citizen? Do you think everything they show and everything we talked about is gonna get cause you to come and play it eventually? Or do you still think it's a scam? Let me know down in the comments below. Talk to you guys later. Peace.